Math 230, Cuesta College, I'm Joe Vasta, and today we are covering section 7.2, Conditional Probability. Before we get into this, let's take a look at a few puzzles. We'll do the answers at the end. What four numbers complete this grid? Another puzzle would be fill in the missing box. Okay, so there's a missing box there. Now, something that is related to probability, before we get into this, is we have a standard pair of dice. Okay, so that's what we have there. You know, of course, on this sheet, one of them is white and one of them is gray, and I have a red and blue one. We can list out the sample space of a standard pair of dice. Looks like this. Now, I did not list out sample spaces like this in the last section. I just did it this way so I can fit them. And they kind of make this, this pattern. Now, in a statistics class, they might list them out this way, and then you have this sort of distribution. And then we can talk about the normal distribution, but we don't want to do that. Okay, the reason I listed them out this way is because on this row right here, there's only one way you can get a sum of two. And there are two ways that you can get a sum of three, etc. So the one that's most likely to come up is the sum of seven. And there are six ways you can get a sum of seven. Okay. So here is another puzzle, puzzle three. Using natural numbers only, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Can you renumber the faces of a pair of six sided dice so that their sums have the same distributions or distribution as the sums from a standard pair of dice? Meaning, can you put numbers and create a pair of dice, not 1 through 6 and 1 through 6, but maybe, you know, one, three, four, seven, something, or you know, you can repeat numbers too. You can say one, two, two, and you have to create a pair of them. They don't even have to be the same. And in fact, they're not going to be the same. Can you create a pair of six-sided dice so that their sums have the same distribution as the sums from a standard pair of dice, meaning you can play Monopoly with your pair of dice. And there would be six sums of seven and you know, one, two, three, four, five sums of six, etc., and there would be one sum of two. Okay, so that is the third puzzle, and we'll come back to these puzzles at the very end. This last one having to do with probability. So let's talk about conditional probability. You have a box which contains four blue marbles, three green marbles, and one red marble. You will randomly draw one marble out of the box. Okay, so the first one is just a review from 7.1. What is the probability that you pull out a green? Well, how many greens do you have in the box? That's what you want. You have one, two, three greens in the box. And how many marbles are in the box total? Eight. So our answer is three over eight. And that's how you do a regular probability problem. Now what we have is this. What is the probability it is green, kind of like the top question, given that it is not blue? So basically what you have is you have these marbles, that, oh, maybe I made these too big. Okay, this is what you have here. And suppose, you know, the probability that it's green is 3 8. Suppose you had your hand in the box and you put your hand on one of the marbles, but someone else was observing you and they were saying, okay, you got to pull that out. But guess what? that marble that you have is not blue. 
which means those guys are out. They're still in the box, but you are holding on to one of those four marbles. So your probability just changed when you were given this condition, the condition being it is not blue. So now it looks like this. And the probability of pulling a green out of a box that looks just like that is three out of four. So I'm gonna put that down right here. So this is three out of four. And so what does this really mean? Like if, you know, you might not have stuff like this. So when you're doing your homework and you draw this out, maybe you would do the problem like this. You would say, okay, look, this is what we'll be doing. Blue, 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 green, 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 red. So the way we approach conditional probability is that there is a given that. Given that means it's going to be conditional. There's going to be a condition. And then it says it is not blue. So my hand's in the box and someone tells me, hey, you're not holding a blue marble. So what I do is I tweak the sample space so it looks like that. And then I go ahead and do my probability. It is green, three out of four. So that's how I deal with conditional probability in this class. Now, is there a more complicated way of doing conditional probability? Absolutely, and you may see that in a statistics class. We'll talk about that um, after a few experiments. So let's go ahead and do more examples with conditional probability. And we'll even play blackjack in this lecture, and we'll analyze that and we'll see that there's a lot of conditional probability flying around. Let's go ahead, oh, one last thing before we do this, okay. I should say that people get sick of writing out given that, given that. So the notation, so there's notation for this. For conditional probability is we can write the problem like this. What is the probability that it is green. And then instead of writing given that, we write this right here. So that right there is your given that. And then we, on the other side, we'd put the condition. So we would probably put not blue. And so this right here means given that. So that's supposed to be an error there. So we'll see problems like this, and we'll also see them written out with the given that as well. So let's go ahead and do problem number three. We'll change the experiment. The experiment is you roll a die. Okay, so you roll a die. We've seen the die, it looks like this, it has one through six. So let's go ahead and put that up here. I think I'll put it right underneath. So there's six marbles in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we discussed in the last section that rolling this die is the same as having those six marbles in the box and you pull out one of those marbles. So what's the probability you pull out an even number? Well, how many even numbers do you have? Um, you have one, two, three. This is all over how many numbers in the box? Six. So the probability of um, rolling an even number is one half. Now that right there is not a conditional probability. We do not have a given that or that line there. You see a conditional probability right there. So these are ones just to warm up on. What is the probability of pulling a six out of that box? Well, there's only one six in that box out of six marbles. So that's how you do the next one. Okay, so here's our conditional probability. What is the probability 
of rolling a six given that. So let me go ahead and just emphasize in this example, I won't do this every time, this is a given that. Given that it is even. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll this die, but I'm actually going to be mean about it and roll it off camera. Now, I'm looking at it right now, and honestly, what happened is I can tell you that I rolled an even number. Now, if I didn't, I would have to stop this video and then start right from the beginning, you know, because... Nah, I wouldn't do that. I would just then lie. But, but honestly, I did roll an even number. So how is that going to change the probability of get, getting a 6? Well, that means I would cross out all the odd numbers. And now my sample space, my box, has how many marbles in it? It only has three marbles. So that's going to be the denominator or the bottom of the fraction. So what's the probability I pull a six out of that box that just has three marbles now? Well, it would be one, because there's only one six out of three. So don't you see that the condition changed the probability? It changed it from one sixth to one third it made it more likely when I told you that condition. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch around those events on this problem. So look at this. So here's problem number six. It's going to kind of, I mean, I could put this here because I didn't write anything there. Um, so all I did was switch around even and six and see how that plays. Now, if you were wondering what I rolled, and I'm, I'm not changing it, I rolled a four. Okay. So, what is the probability of rolling an even number given a 6? Okay, so our experiment is we are rolling a die. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what do we do first when we have a problem like this in our homework? We go to the condition. So, here's the condition and we have to satisfy the condition. The condition says, it's almost like I rolled the die and I said, oh, it landed on six. And then I ask you, what's the probability it's even? That's kind of what the conditional probability is. So um, I have to cross out, kind of like on this one, I had to cross out all the things that were not even. I'm going to have to cross out on this one all the things that are not six. Because the condition is the die will land on a six. And of course, I made black marks on there. I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Let me go ahead and put this one right here. So this is kind of um, sort of a dumb probability problem in some ways. Because look at this. You have a box. I'll just say this equals this situation. I, I did not do it over here, but I'll do it in this situation. You have a box that has how many marbles in it? Just one marble. And that one marble is the six marble. And we're asking the question, what is the probability you pull an even number out of that box? Well, there's one even number in the box out of one. So it is certain it is one. Probabilities cannot be greater than one. So we can put all of our money on the fact that we will actually satisfy this probability. It will happen. Okay, let's continue here, and what I really want you to understand in these six examples about rolling a die is um, this notation and getting used to drawing the sample space of the experiment and then crossing things out based on that condition. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can do number seven on your own. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just put these guys side by side because it's interesting to see all the things that happen. The probability of an odd given not a 5. So let's go ahead and draw our sample space. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll that die. And I can tell you for sure this is not five. So we do our condition first. So we tweak our sample space to satisfy the condition. So not five means cross out the five. So it, it's kind of like this. This one didn't say not six, it said six. So I crossed out all the other ones. On this one it says not five, so I cross out the five. So what's the probability of pulling an odd number out of that box now? Now the box only has five marbles. Well, how many odd numbers do you have? One, two. So I have two odd numbers out of five marbles. So two fifths. Now you could say, oh, well, that's 40%. That's cute, but we don't have to say that. By the way, I rolled a, a two. So we didn't win this one here because that's an even number. Okay, so that's how you do conditional probability. Let's go ahead and do this last problem. Okay, I roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I always go to my condition. So this says, what is the probability you roll a six given that it's an odd number? So given that it's an odd number, I have to cross out all the even numbers. So now I only have one, three, and five in the box, three marbles. Okay, so that's the case, and I'm trying to find the probability of pulling a six out of the box. How many sixes do I have in the box? Well, with these three marbles, I have no sixes. Zero. Out of three marbles. Zero over three is zero, and that's as low as probabilities can be. And so these conditions that we put on our um, probability problems do change the probabilities. I mean, the probability of getting a six is one six, but the probability of giving a, getting a six given an odd is zero. So you might say to yourself, well, this is kind of dumb. Where does this happen in the real world? And it happens all the time in the real world. Things come up. Insurance companies, when they want to um, sell you life insurance, will ask you some questions. Do you smoke? Well, if you say yes, that's a condition. That's a condition, and that changes your probability of living longer. Do you skydive? Do you do all these things? They ask you these, these questions because they're trying to compute the conditional probability of your life and then adjust the payments based on that. So if you smoke, you're probably going to have to pay a lot more for like life insurance. And same with auto insurance. Um, when you get into a few accidents, that's a condition and it changes your probability, it changes your rates, but it changes the probability of you getting into another accident according to the insurance companies. And so they have these people called actuaries that figure these things out. Let's go ahead and do another experiment. So we've just done six problems with rolling a die. Here's this one right here. You toss a dime, a nickel, and a penny. So here's something that does not have a condition, and then here's a probability that does have a condition. So you could pause the video maybe and do this on your own. Here it goes. The first thing I want to do is draw the sample space. So dime, nickel, penny, they can all land on heads. Head, 
head, head. And then this is the one where we kind of did in the last section. Two things can happen with the dime, two things can happen with the nickel, two things can happen with the penny. Two times two times two is eight. It's like I'm drawing a truth table. I alternate in the last column by ones. Now in the second column, I alternate by two, so I have two heads, two tails, two heads, two tails. And in the first column, I alternate by four, so four heads and four tails. So how many marbles do I have in the box? I actually have eight marbles. Here's my box. It's quite a deep box there. And tossing a dime, nickel, and penny and looking at heads and tails is, is the same as drawing one marble out of this box. So what is the probability that I get three heads? Well, how many marbles in this box have three heads? Just that one right there. So my answer is going to be one out of eight. So the hard part about this problem is drawing out the sample space. Now here's the conditional probability here. What is the probability of getting three heads given at least one head? Okay, given that we're going to get at least one head. What does at least one head mean? It means one head or more. So one head or more, I'm going to put this piece of paper underneath because I'm going to cross out with the Sharpie. So this is good. This is at least one head, 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 and anything that has a head in it is good. What we're going to cross out based on the condition is tail, tail, tail. Okay, so the condition says we tweak the sample space so it satisfies this. So at least one head, those other seven marbles have at least one head. That's one head or more. Let's go ahead and do our probability. What is the probability of getting three heads? Well, it's going to be one out of seven. So the condition changed our probability. Now, conditions will usually change the probability, but sometimes there will be a condition and it will not change the probability. Okay, and we'll see that in one of these examples. But most of the time when you throw a condition out there, it changes the probability. Let's go ahead and do another experiment. And this experiment is going to cover 11 and 12. You roll a pair of dice. Okay, so now instead of just one die, it's two dice. Okay, and so six things can happen here, six things can happen here. Six times six is 36. This is sort of a review of the last section. I need 36 marbles in the box. The last time I did it in two different colors, it took a little longer. This time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go a little faster and say, well, the first one can land on one, the second one can land on one. And then the first one can land on one, the second one can land on two. And one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. And then I'm going to do two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two six three one three two three 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 four three five three six four one four two four three four 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 five four six this would be a good video for people who just want to 
they couldn't sleep. They just put this video on and then they hear a math teacher going 5 1, 5 2, 5 3, 5 4, 5 5, 5 6, and then 6 1, 6 2, 6 3, 6 4, 6 5, 6 6. Now it's not perfectly straight, but oh well, I'm going to throw these in a box. There it is. I'm not going to circle them all like I did in the other one. I'll just, here's my 36 marbles. And we are asked this question What is the probability both dice show even numbers? Okay. Let's circle what we want in green. Okay. So both dice show even numbers. It wouldn't be along this first column here because each of those have ones in them. But maybe a two, two. And um, what else? Two, four. So problem number 11 is just a basic probability problem. Two, six nothing from this column because each of these have a three in them and we want both dice showing even numbers. So four two four 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 six six two six four six six. So it looks like I circled nine of the marbles. That's nine out of 36, which reduces to one fourth. Four go, not four, one, go, one, I don't know, okay, nine goes into nine one time and nine goes into 36 four times, so that's how we reduced it. Just barely reduced it, I guess. Okay, now, what is the probability both dice show even numbers, so we're looking for the same thing, Given that, the sum is 6. Now, that's a lot of crossing out to do. The sum is 6 happens to be this diagonal here. I'll go ahead and show you this diagonal right here. Those marbles have a sum of 6. Now, yes, I can take the Sharpie and cross out all the other ones. It's going to take me some time, and I'll probably pass out because this is a really stinky Sharpie pen. Um, but I don't have to do that if I understand that the box that I'm actually going to pull from after um, I consider the condition is going to be this red box. So the red box, let me go ahead and emphasize that a little better with this red pin here. Maybe it doesn't. So that's the box I'm going to pull from. Now, if you'd like, you can cross out all the other ones if you want with, with a Sharpie. I just decided that that would take too much time. And so this box has how many marbles in it? One, two, three, four, five. So we've considered the condition. We tweaked our sample space. And now let's go ahead and answer the question. We're looking in that red box. What's the probability both dice show even numbers? Well, one, two is what I want. And how many are in this red box? Five. So two fifths. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, and I think I'll do this in a different color like blue, is I'm going to show you how they do this problem in a statistics class. And some of you are not going to like this, so you might want to skip to the next experiment. But if you ever have to take a statistics class, you might get ready to see something like this. So here's number 12. I'll just do it over here. I'm going to say optional. In fact, I would not even I wouldn't even consider doing this kind of problem this way in this class. So 
in a statistics, statistics class, they'll say the probability of A, that's an event given B, so this is going to get a little abstract. This equals the probability of A intersect B all over the probability of B. So, you know, lots of books will say here is conditional probability and they'll start off with this definition here. Well, in our example, this is A. Both I show even numbers. And then this is B. The sum is 6. So I'll write this down. Probability of even, I'll just say both even, and, okay, so that's what the intersection is. It's an and, and sum 6 all over the probability of sum 6. Okay, both even and sum 6. There's only two in this box of 36 that are both even and their sum is 6. It would be the 2, 4, and the 4, 2. So that the top probability is 2 out of 36. And the bottom probability is the sum probability sum 6, which, be, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 36. So then you have a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm going to do a copy dot flip, copy the top, turn it into multiply, and then flip the 36's cancel. And we're left with what? Two-fifths. And so yes, this does work, but for our class, drawing the sample space and tweaking the sample space is going to be the simplest way of doing the problems. Yeah, when problems are a little more complicated and the sample space is big and you're doing more abstract stuff, this formula is great, but it's not for this class. And the only reason I show this to you is some of you have had statistics and wondering, you're wondering, where's this formula? Well, it's always here. We're kind of doing this formula, but we're, we're trying to do the easier way. And the other reason is some of you are going to have to take a statistics. And I want to introduce you to the formula that I'll show you in that statistics class. So forget the blue part, I would say for everybody in this class, and um, let's just do the problems this way where we have a sample space and we tweak the sample space. Now there's some sun coming on. The sun's moving over, moving across the sky and it shines right on the paper, but it also shines in my eye. Eyes. I have two eyes. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do this next problem here. You draw a single card from a deck of 52 playing cards, unless otherwise specified. Okay, so I guess that's what it says in the homework. So it will, I don't think we're going to specify anything else on this, but in the homework they might throw the jokers in there and then that would make it 54. So be prepared to read what the experiment is. So what is the probability you get a diamond? Now this right here is a basic probability problem. And some of you are like, well, I don't know what a sample space for playing cards looks, looks like. It looks like that. There are 52 cards here. Um, four rows of 13. Okay. So the probability of getting a diamond, well, if you count the diamonds, there's 13 of them out of 52.
And of course a lot of you could see just by looking at the picture that that looks like it was about a fourth of them and it, it's actually exactly a fourth. So there is the first probability. You draw a single card. The probability of getting a diamond is one fourth. Now, problem number 14 says, what is the probability of giving, getting a diamond given that it is a two? So I'm gonna bring the cards back. The given, the condition says it is a two. So now I'm gonna take the more destructive approach on this one. This one was problem, what is this? Problem number 14. That's what I want to put up here. So I'm going to say this is 14. And it says the given that is, it is a two, which means it's not an ace. It's not a three. So this is the other way that I was talking about with um, the last experiment that I could have just crossed out all the marbles that did not have a sum of six in the last experiment. But see how long this has taken? I mean, wow. And it's also destroying one of my handouts that has the playing cards on them. But I want to illustrate the point. So you've got a box of 52 marbles. You were given a condition. It is a two. So how many marbles do we have left in the box? We just have one, two, three, four. Ooh, that pen is starting to smell. So if I start saying the wrong things or if I fall over, well, that's because of the pen. Okay, so we're done with this. It is a two. We have four marbles in the box. There they are, one, two, three, four. What is the probability? You pull one of these marbles out and you get a diamond. Well, there's only one diamond out of four. So this gives me one fourth. And this is the first one that we saw in this lecture where we put a condition on the probability and it did not change the probability at all. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure we had one of those in our lecture. So this is problem number 14, the probability of pulling out a diamond given that it is a two. Okay, problem number 15 says, what is the probability you pull out a diamond given it is a red? The card that you're going to draw is red. So let's go ahead and put 15 on this. The condition says the card is a red, so we're going to cross out all the black cards. So your box really now only looks like this right here. Your box doesn't have 52 marbles in it, it only has 26. So what is the probability? You pull a diamond out of this box. Well, there are 13 diamonds out of 26 marbles. 13 over 26 reduces to one half. And you can see that half of those marbles in this box right here are diamonds. Let's go ahead and do problem number 16. What is the probability you draw a diamond given that the four of clubs is missing from the deck? Now this is a personal problem because, you know, when I was young, I had a deck of playing cards and one of my cards was missing. And so this is bringing back bad childhood memories because Go Fish was never the same when that happened. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. So this is number 16. The four of clubs is missing from the deck. This 
four of clubs. So we're going to get rid of this one right here. So how many cards do I have? Or how many marbles do I have in this sample space? Now I have 51. And they're asking in this problem, what is the probability of getting a diamond? It would be 13 diamonds out of 51. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one. Probability of getting a club given that the four of clubs is missing from the deck. So this is the same condition as the one up there, which means I can use the same picture from the last one. And now we're doing the probability of getting a club. Well, how many clubs do I have in this deck of cards? Well, I have one, two, three, remember that one's missing. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve. Now I just got rid of everything. Twelve clubs out of now remember, there's not 52 cards, there are 51 cards. So 12 out of 51. And I think 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 12 four times. And 3 goes into 51. Seventeen times. So four out of seventeen is the answer for problem number 17. And so this is how you do conditional probability. You tweak the sample space each time. And I'm going to make sure that I include just this sample space for number 13 in the PDFs of this lecture. So let's go on to our next experiment. This is where it gets super interesting. So we'll get rid of this as well. We have this. You are playing cards with Alice and Bob. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a table. Here's Alice. Here's Bob. You. Okay. Each of you have two cards. You have a King of Hearts and a Ten of Spades. King of Hearts and a Ten of Spades. That's what you have. And Alice has a Seven of Diamonds. She's looking at it. And an unknown card. Bob has an ace of clubs and an unknown card. Oh wait, he's looking at his ace of clubs. So what game are you playing? You, you're playing 21, sometimes called blackjack. If Bob's unknown card is a 10 or a face card, then Bob has blackjack and wins. What is the probability that Bob has a blackjack given the information that you know? So now we're actually playing a game and there's conditional probability going on. Now in this game, you try 
to get as close to 21 without going over. An ace counts as a 1 or an 11, whatever helps you out to get close to 21. The number cards like 7 and 10, they count for what they are, so 7 and 10. And then the face cards like Jack, Queen, and King count as a 10. So you have what? 10, 20. Now, really, when you're playing this, one of your cards is upside down, and you can go like this, and you can look at it. But Bob and Alice do not know both of your cards. Okay, so it's pretty tricky, isn't it? So I'm just turning this over because this is what you know. You have a 20. Now you have a chance to say, oh, I want another card. But I would not do that with a 20 because it is very unlikely. It could happen that you would get an ace. You already see one of the aces is right there. So if you had an ace, then you would have a 21. Now, it wouldn't be a blackjack. It wouldn't be the best way to get 21. The best way to get 21 is an 11 here and a card that is worth 10, and that's called a blackjack. So you're concerned, I mean, because betting's involved too. You're putting money in the middle of the table, and you want to, you know, you, you have to figure out that Bob could have a blackjack and just win this game. So this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to analyze this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at all the cards. So you're really wondering what is the probability Bob's unknown card is a 10 or a face card? Probability Bob's unknown card is ten or face card. Given what? Given what you know. I know this is a little weird writing it this way. Okay. We can actually be more precise on this, but given what you know. So we have, if you count all the face cards and the tens, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 16. So there are 16 cards that are worth 10. Okay. And so you might just say, oh, well, it's 16 over 52. But that's not right. Because you know that this card right here, Bob's unknown card, cannot be the King of Hearts, it cannot be the Ten of Spades, and it cannot be the Seven of Diamonds. So we would have, and it also, actually, Bob's card cannot be the ace of clubs you can't have two ace of clubs in this deck we're just we're assuming we're playing with just one deck of playing cards so what would that mean that would mean i would have to cross out those four cards in this sample space to do the problem now i'm going to take a different approach instead of crossing out those four cards i create it another piece of paper if I can find it that has those cards crossed out so look the king of hearts is missing so I just took it off the list there's the king of hearts the ten of spades the ace of clubs is missing and the seven of diamonds. And I could have done this with all my other playing card examples, but I thought this one was kind of special. So in terms of what you see, that's the sample space. That is the sample space. 
Okay, so we've given what you know. We're trying to see that Bob, what Bob's unknown card is, or we're trying. Well, we're not trying to see it because that would be cheating, but we're trying to get this. So we're asking, what is the probability of getting a ten or a face card here? Well, how many tens or face cards do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's actually going to be fourteen. in the numerator. And how many cards do I have in my tweaked sample space? Well, it was 52 and we took four of them out because we already knew what they were. So there's 48. So this is 14 over 48, which reduces to seven over 24. So that's the answer. Okay, so what I'll do for the PDF, I'll also draw these cards on here, you know, because how, what am I going to do with this? So this is what we have. Well, I'll figure out a way to put these cards on the PDF. 7 over 24. So the 7 over 24, if you did this in a calculator, you would see that it's about 29%. So you're sitting there going, the probability Bob has a blackjack, which means a natural 21, is 29%. Now here's the really cool part about this. Alice does not see your king of hearts. So it's like this. But she has a card that she does see, so she sees both of those. So if she's asked, what's the probability that Bob has a natural 21 or a blackjack, blackjack. Her conditional probability based on what she sees most likely will be different than seven over 24 or 29%. And that's what makes this game very interesting. Everybody's seeing something different and everybody has different conditional probabilities. And so you'll get a few like this in your homework, um, make sure that you have the sample spaces and maybe on this one I should have crossed out the, the cards instead of doing this, but I wanted to just show you different approaches. So, you know, on this one, instead of crossing out the cards with the Sharpie, I went ahead and printed out another sample space with the cards just missing. So that is problem number 18. Let's go ahead and do a few other problems. These are the miscellaneous problems. Problem number 19. If a person is selected at random, what is the probability that the person was born on a weekend given that the person was not born on a Friday or Saturday. Okay, so it seems very wordy. What we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, how many days of the week are there? Because that's really what they're, they're asking. There's seven, and I'm going to put them in this box. So I have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I do notice the Monday one's coming out of the box on the bottom. I don't know how that's happening. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I do understand if that one turns upside down, we're going to be confused. Thursday, that's the way Cuesta does Thursday with an R. Friday and Saturday. So there are seven marbles initially in this box. Let's put this piece of paper underneath. It says what is the probability that the person was born, a person selected at random, born on a weekend? Okay, so what we're going to call a weekend in this class, we'll call a weekend Saturday and Sunday. I was surprised to see that when I looked up the definition of weekend, it's not well defined. 
Okay, so sometimes people say weekend, that includes Friday night, and so we're just gonna say, we're gonna keep it simple and say the weekend is Saturday, Sunday. So, what is the probability that the person was born on a weekend Given that, there's the given that right there, the person was not born on Friday or Saturday. So not Friday or Saturday. So what do I have to do? I have to take a look at my condition and tweak the sample space to satisfy the condition. That means I'm gonna cross out Friday Saturday. So how many marbles do I have in the box? I have five marbles in the box, which actually tells me the denominator of the fraction, the bottom of the fraction. So let's go ahead and finish this problem. What's the probability? You get a weekend. How many weekends are in the box now of these five marbles? Well, just one. So the answer is one fifth. So this is a miscellaneous problem. Okay, let's go ahead and do Another problem. Number 20. The box contains five blue marbles. Let's put them right here. One, two, three, four, five. Four orange marbles, one, two, three, four. Three red marbles, one, two, three. And one green marble, one. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So here's the experiment. You keep drawing marbles out of the box one at a time with replacement until you get a red or an orange. What is the probability you end up with an orange? Wow. So what's the probability you end up with an orange? Now there is a condition on there. So I'm not gonna put the other parentheses because we wanna think about this. Um, Let's go ahead and show you with the bigger marbles here, or representations of the marbles. We have four, these five blues. I don't even know if there's space on this paper to consider this. One green and three reds. Okay, wow, so that's a lot of marbles. Okay, let's just say this piece of paper is the box. So I close my eyes, I reach into this box, I pull out a blue, okay? So I pull the blue out. Is the experiment over? No, the experiment is not over because it says you keep drawing marbles out of the box one at a time with replacement until you get a red or orange. And this is a blue. So I put the blue back into the box, I mix it around, I close my eyes, I randomly draw something, oh, it's a green. The experiment is not over. I put the green back in the box, mix it around, I draw, draw it on a marble, and I end up getting a red. The experiment is over. Now, that's not what I want to get. I want to get an orange. And I, hopefully this orange and this red, they contrast enough and they don't all look the same. So that is the idea of this experiment. And here's the deal. This problem can be complicated. We can bring out something called an infinite geometric series to do this problem. And maybe in a statistics class that's what you might see. I'm going to show you a better way of doing this problem. Okay. Anytime you do this experiment if you complete the experiment, the very last time you draw from the box, the last time you draw from the box, let me just take these ones off, 
it will be from one of these marbles. So you can draw 50 blues in a row, that's unlikely, and then the 51st time you pull out an orange, then the experiment is over. But the last time in each experiment you draw something out of the box, it will look like one of those seven marbles. So even though this does look pretty involved, and yes, there are blues and greens in there, okay? Those blues and greens are irrelevant on the last draw of the experiment because the last draw of the experiment has to be the oranges and the reds. So here's the condition, even though it doesn't say given that, this is going to be given that what? The last draw, and we won't say the last draw, we'll just say given that you get an orange. Um, or red. We could have said it differently given that you do not get a blue or a green for the last draw. So there's the condition right there. So let's move these out of the way and let's do our condition. Our condition here is orange or red which means I'm going to cross out all the blues and the greens. And of course I've just ruined the picture but oh well. So what's the probability you pull an orange out of that box that has seven marbles? It would be four oranges that I see out of seven marbles. Now you might think, well this is kind of a dumb experiment. This would never happen in the real world. But it does, and one of the places this happens is if you're analyzing the game of craps. Which we'll do... Um, as problem number 22. So I want to go ahead and do another problem that is like this to make sure we know how to do this. Problem number 21. Okay, a box contains four yellow, so let me just make it a little simpler now. Four yellow, four orange, three blue, two red, and one pink. So there's your box. How many marbles? One, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like there's 14. There's 14 marbles in there. You keep drawing marbles out of the box, one at a time with replacement, until you end up or till you get a yellow, a blue, or a pink. So a yellow, a blue, or a pink. What is the probability that you end up with a yellow? So what is the probability you end up with a yellow? Here's the given that. So your last time you draw from this box in the experiment, it has to be from one of the um, things that I have circled. So given that, you're going to end up with a yellow, blue, or pink. And so we could, I won't do it with a Sharpie this time, what we would do is we'd cross out all these ones here, the reds and the oranges, because you could never end up with a red or an orange according to this experiment and we see if we can get this. So how many yellows do we have in the box now? Our new tweaked box. One, two, three, four. Out of how many marbles total? Well, that would be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the answer then is one half. So that's how you do these weird probability problems where you have marbles in a box and you're you keep drawing marbles and putting them back until you get a certain color. Okay, They'll all work out like that. Let's go ahead and do the next one. You keep rolling a pair of dice until you get a sum of seven or eight. What is the probability that you end up with the sum of eight? Okay, well, this is modeled from the game called Craps, and you might have seen this 
you know, maybe may have played this. Um, and it's, it's kind of complicated. I don't want to go over all the rules because that's not the point. Uh, I'll just go over the basic things. You roll a pair of dice and you end up getting a 7 or 11, you win. But suppose you rolled the pair of dice and you bet on the pass line and you end up getting an 8. Well, then you still have a chance to redeem yourself by rolling the pair of dice again and again until you get a 7 or an 8. If you get a 7, then you lose. You get a sum of 8, then you win and redeem yourself. So that's what this is kind of based on. And what you really need is you really need to draw out the sample space for a pair of dice. And I've already done it since we've already drawn one out in this lecture. I didn't want you to have to see me do that again. So here it is. Let's go ahead and do this problem. What is the probability you get a sum of 8? Now, of course, you're going to keep rolling the pair of dice until you get a 7 or an 8. And you want this. You want the 8s. What you don't want coming up are those 7s. Well, this is a conditional probability problem. Let me go put the paper underneath so we don't get this one too polluted here. And so this is the probability of sum of 8 given that your last roll is going to be sum 7 or 8. And so using this condition here, we have to cross out all the other sums like sum of 6 and sum of 5, and 4, and 3, and 2, and then sum of 9, sum of 10, sum of 11, and sum of 12. So now your box only has those elements in it. So what's the probability you get a sum of 8? Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things that have a sum of 8 out of how many things total in the box? Well, that would be 11. So it's just under one half. It's not one half, it's less than one half. And so that's how you analyze things, games like crap. So I will, uh, with the PDFs, include a sheet that analyzes the game of craps using conditional probabilities. But we're not gonna get into that right now. We do wanna finish this lecture eventually. Okay, the next problem. Mr. Smith has two children and at least one of them is a boy. What is the probability that the other child is a boy? And we're assuming that the probability of having a boy is one half, the probability of having a girl is one half. So we're just going to keep it simple like that. And so when someone has two children, the first, the oldest can be a boy, and the youngest can be a boy. You can have a boy, then a girl, a girl, then a boy, or you can have oldest girl, youngest girl. And so there are four marbles in the box. It's kind of like a truth table. And your condition on this is this right here. At least one of them is a boy. And so what am I going to do with this? What does at least one of them is a boy mean? It means one or more. So we keep boy boy, we keep boy girl, we keep girl boy. The only one that does not fit this condition is girl girl. So how many marbles do I have in the box now? One, two, three. What is the probability that the other child is a boy? That would mean you would have had 
two boys because it says at least one of them is a boy. So there's only one in there where the other child then would be a boy. It's that top marble. The answer is one third. Now that should drive you crazy. You should be mad at this because you would want to say like one half. So something's wrong here or is it wrong? No, we did the problem correctly. I remember taking probability class at the university and they did this and then they just moved on and we were all pissed off because we felt like the teacher did the problem wrong. So let me submit to you problem number 24 and we're going to see what's up with this. Mr. Smith has two children and the oldest is a boy. What is the probability that the other child is a boy? So what is the probability the other child is a boy? The thing that's different about this problem is the way the condition is stated. It says the oldest child is a boy. On this one, a lot of people psychologically like to assign perhaps the oldest child being a boy and turn this problem, even though it isn't, into this problem right here. So let's go ahead and draw the sample space. So this is boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. There's the box. Now notice the difference between this condition and that condition. This one says the oldest child is a boy. So the ones where the oldest child is a girl, we cross out. Then they ask, what is the probability that the other child is a boy? Well, that would be just boy, boy. It would just be one out of, and now how many marbles do we have in the box? Two marbles. And that's probably what you feel happier with. Now, what is the reason for this? Why is it one third? Well, this truly is one third. Where it all boils down to is the English language. When we state at least one of them as a boy, uh, that's different than fixing one of the children, fixing one of the children, well, um, fixing that child to be a boy, saying the first child is a boy. So there is a difference between this. And if you have a problem with the English language, a math class is not the place to bring it up. But this is where you would then bother your English teacher, you know, and say, hey, can you explain at least? Um, but this is, this is true, and it actually does make a lot of people mad. Technical people will see this for the first time, and I think some of the professors will not contrast this with this one right here, and they'll just leave them with this one and say, ha, 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 and then class is over and everybody walks out kind of mad. So that's what happened. That was my experience. And if the teacher, if the professor had shown this one, I would have said, ah, it's all just in the phrasing. It's all in the, in the English language. We can actually do an experiment with chips that are like white on one side and red on the other side. And it truly is. We could truly get the same results and do an experiment, but we don't have time to do that. And this is not a statistics class. So we don't really want to get too much into that. Okay, so number 23 and 24, those are classic examples. You don't have to worry about something like that. I don't think that pops up in your homework, but it might. But I wouldn't worry about those for the test. Okay, let's go ahead and do our three puzzles. Okay. What four numbers complete this grid? Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start from this top cell right here and spiral around. So look at this. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then watch this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how this one does. It's a spiral. Let's do the next puzzle. Fill in the missing box. Well, how you do this, maybe you figured this out, is you say four times four is 16 
not 61, but think about it. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25. So 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. Or we could say 6 squared. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. Now, what do you notice with the 16 and 61 and 25 and 52? You just switched the numbers. We reversed the digits. And that's what goes here. So 9 times 9 happens to be 81. And then we switch that. So um, it is 18 that goes in that box. Our last puzzle that has to do with probability is remember I showed you a standard pair of dice. And then here are outcomes of a standard pair of dice. So you can play Monopoly with a standard pair of dice and there will be um, one, two, three, four, five, six times that you can get a sum of seven. And what you want to do is you want to, using natural numbers only, create your own pair of dice and they're probably not going to be the same, you know, like we have for the standard pair. You know, this would, might be different from this dice. Um, so that the sums have the same distribution as the sums from a standard pair of dice. Well, here's the deal. There is one solution to this. It's a unique solution. And there was a colonel named Sickerman who actually discovered this. And so there it is. So here's your Sickerman dice. And I have a pair of Sickerman dice. So look, there's the eight and there's the one. Okay, and eight plus one gives me nine. So we could take a look at this and analyze, well, how many ways can you get a sum of two? Well, just by going one, one. How many ways can you get a sum of three? You can go um, two, one, and two, one. Okay, so there's, there's two of them, just like with a standard pair of dice. And so let's go ahead and write out all the things that can happen with the Sickerman dice. And let's see if we can fit this all in the range of the camera. So here's the Sickerman dice. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and fold this. So it says outcomes. That's, but I've kind of folded this. So it says outcomes of a pair of Sickerman dice. And so all I just did was write this out and here are the ways you can get a sum of two it's by going one one and then here's the other one two one and two one and then sum of four so this was sum of three sum of four you can do it this way a one three gives me a four and a three one and a three one so you could actually take this pair of Sickerman dice and play Monopoly with it there are six ways you can get a sum of seven. And then here's your 12. It's not a six and a six, it's a four and an eight. Um, the only thing that would be different when you're playing Monopoly is I don't think you have six doubles. Remember, you roll a double, you get to go again. I think you only have four of them. Let's say one, one, and three, 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 three. So that's three doubles. And then I think we have, I know where it is, oh, four, four, right there. So there's only four doubles and not six doubles. But otherwise, the um, sums come out the same. There's only one way of getting a 12 and two ways of give, getting an 11. And so these are the famous Sickerman dice. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to show you, I thought this was kind of neat. is this pair of dice right here. And some of you have seen this before. You can buy round dice, and when you roll them, and you're really rolling them, aren't you? And they have little weights in there so that you can see this is a three and this one's a six. And so that's a, a sum of nine. And so every time you roll the pair of round dice, oh, that's a nine. Maybe I've got an unfair pair of round dice. So we'll end this lecture with the Sickerman dice. I thought that was really neat.
um, to show you, it is a famous probability thing. Do your homework. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.